So hello again. Uh, this time I'm going to talk about uh, VLC 4.0. Uh, so I'm pretty sure you all know VLC. Uh, it started as a student project in a school in France on their campus. They needed to stream video and uh, to get actual, uh, to prove their school, they need uh, network wires. They sh developed a video player to show they didn't have enough bandwidth on the existing uh, networks, so the school would pay for a new network, so that's how it started. Um, now it's, uh, it's been uh, probably 20 years since that started. Now it's developed mainly on the developer mailing list, and we're using Git. We're going to move soon to GitLab, which is uh, an open source version of uh, GitHub. It's also developed by a company, but we use the open source version on our own servers. Uh, so we are going to move all the Git development, the feedback uh, is still done on forum. The issues will be just like GitHub instead of track with a bit uh, not very nice to use. Also, it's very slow. Uh, sometimes it loses your login, so we're moving away from that. We also do support on Reddit because we're cool young people. Um, we also uh, do continuous integration of uh, Jenkins, and which is also moving to GitLab. So we have servers whenever we do a commit. We test that it builds on all the platform we support. And we also do a test suite checks so that we don't break anything for playback. Uh, or metadata or things like that, and we keep adding tests so whenever we make a change in VLC, nothing breaks. Uh, so VLC is uh, developed and uh, managed by Videolan, which is a non-profit association based in France, and th this is important because in France there is no software patents, and because of that, we are able to distribute binaries versions of VLC, which includes FMPEG inside, um, which could be done by FMPEG, uh, but at least we're doing it for ourselves. Uh, there's at least uh, 30 members in the association. Uh, a lot of them are French, German, English, from USA. The vice president of the association is Russian, uh, etc. Uh, and the association relies on donations for organizing, for example, the, the video dev days that happened, I think, two weeks ago in Japan. Uh, organize workshops when we need some people focusing on one feature we need to work on. Uh, with the people who know how, uh, we gather people from the, around the world in one place to work on it. So that pays for that kind of stuff. Uh, that also helps us uh, go around the world and talk about VLC and why people should use it like me today here. And also we are participating in uh, the Alliance for Open Media, which is the um, the organization that developed AV1, which Carl talked about before. I also talked about it before, which is uh, an open codec. That means there's no patent. The documentation is completely open. And uh, so, but participating in that open process is not free. Uh, and so we had to pay the association to be participating. We had to pay to do that. So that's also where the donation money go to. And then there's something else called Video Labs, which is a, an actual company. It's not a non-profit association created by JB, who is also the um, president of the non-profit association. Uh, so I work there. We are about 20 people working full time on VLC, doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, first fixing bugs, but then adding new features and even exploring other things. Um, 
We actually are the company who developed VLC for iOS, for Android, and UWP, which is Universal Windows, which is used on Xbox, for example. Um, we also developed the media library that these versions use. Uh, and so all the development and all the publishing is done by the company because also if it's a non-profit, it's more complicated for the uh, app stores. And we also develop uh, libvlc Sharp, which is a wrapper in C-sharp for VLC, which is also used in Unity, so you can we hope there will be games soon who are playing their videos through VLC, which is easier for them than develop their own video players. And we also do commercial partnerships. For example, uh, this summer in Roland Garros, in the French Tennis Open, there was a demo of 8K live broadcasting. And so the decoding was done through VLC. Uh, and they didn't have any other player to show, so they picked us, and it worked. Uh, and so did you see the address of the website. I'm also going to talk a bit about FF Labs. It's exactly the same thing as Video Labs does for VLC, but for FFmpeg. It's uh, already created, I don't know exactly the date, but it's part uh, created in France and in Germany. Uh, also, in Germany, there's no software patterns for the same reason we can be based there. Uh, the main people involved right now are so JB, Michael Niedermeyer, that Carl talked about before, James Almer, Timo, Tilo Borgman, and Anton Kirnov, and they're all uh, very important uh, developers in FMPEG, probably on the top contributors. Uh, probably in the top 10 at least. So the idea is that uh, Peter was asking if there's a way to pay for development in FFmpeg. Until there it was complicated, but that's exactly why FFLab was created. We kept hearing, I mean, Video Labs was created because people needed stuff in VLC and they, need to, they needed faster with someone dedicated on it. And so we have Video Labs, and now we know exactly people kept act asking us for FMPEG. We are going to do it as well. Uh, where do I fit in? Uh, so I started working in VLC in 2003. You may remember I created Matroska in 2002. Uh, I started working on VLC because I needed to show Matroska is actually us usable. I needed to show it can be used to play and store videos and VLC was the obvious choice because it's all open source, so I could go in the code and add my stuff and make it work. And now I've been working uh, full-time for Video Labs uh, for f almost five years. Uh, I mostly work on, the, on Windows platform. I, I'm actually the only developer of VLC working on Windows, so anything that doesn't work on Windows, it's for me. Uh, including our hardware support, which is not fun. Uh, obviously, I also work on Matroska Demuxer, which is, we have our own in, my, in VLC, because the one in FMPEG probably doesn't support stuff like uh, link uh, files and segments uh, stuck together in the same file. So for now, um, we have our own Demuxer in VLC for that kind of feature. I'm also an FMPEG developer. Whenever I find a bug uh, in FMPEG, uh, if I can fix it, I send my patches. And because I worked on hardware development on Windows, I also created the Direct 3D11 uh, hardware decoding part. And I was uh, designated uh, as the maintainer. Uh, so the VLC code is almost entirely written in C. Uh, a little, some of the modules, like the Matroska one, are written in C++, and there's a little bit of Lua scripting, where, for example, you can write scripts uh, to command to send commands to VLC, but you can also create your own demuxer in Lua. 
And for example, if you play a YouTube link or Vimeo, Dailymotion, other stuff in VLC, the, the web page of the YouTube link is actually passed in Lua, and then the actual video is, uh, the link is given to VLC. And for now, nothing is written in Rust. I don't know if any of you have heard of Rust, but it's a kind of new language which is more, which allows less bug to be written, so it's supposed to be safer. We're considering written, writing some paths in Rust. Uh, VLC has two different licenses. Uh, the one you download from our website is the GPL version. That means it, uh, it has all the features. There's an LGPL version. That means it's not, it, we remove the GPL code from it. And basically, uh, that if you use that version, if you make modifications to the code, you can keep it to yourself. If you use the GPL version and you make changes or additions to VLC, then you need to publish the, the changes uh, in public. So depending on your needs, you may need to use the GPL version or the LGPL version. Most of you don't even need to care about that. You just use the GPL version and you have full features. Uh, also, the big thing in VLC uh, is that we actually have a lot of external code that we call contribs, and I wrote 70% of it is contribs that I don't have an actual number. It might be 90%, I don't know. Uh, we, cre we have our own uh, contribs that we maintain, so DVD read, read is uh, for basic parsing of the DVD IFO files. DVD nav is uh, on top of DVD read, but you handle uh, menus uh, in DVDs. DVD CSS is the encryption that was written from a guy, and then we took over the project to maintain it. Uh, we also have LibreWare, who is uh, the equivalent of uh, DVD read, but for Blu-rays. David, which is our open source uh, AV1 decoder that we developed with the help of all the alliance for open media people. Uh, and basically, if you play an AV1 file in uh, Chrome, now it's actually or in Firefox or uh, maybe Edge, Microsoft Edge, they're all using our decoders because right now there's no hardware decoding, so they all use software decoding that we wrote and which is a lot faster than the one they wrote. Uh, we also maintain X264, which is an H H264 decode, uh, encoder. Uh, again, for patent reason, it was better for the developer to go through video land to host it, and so we maintain it as well. There's also a, a small library called Bitstream that we use to parse TS and uh, MPEG ES streams. Uh, there's the major media library I talked before, which is basically the equivalent of what you have in iTunes with all your, the list of your video and audio with all the metadata that you can search. Uh, ARIM25, which is a Japanese encryption system that we also had to add in VLC. DCA, it's a DTS decoder, so you can find that in uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. Uh, DVD, DVBPSI, it's a DVD PSI parser, I don't even know what that is. We also added recently spatial audio, which does ambisonic encoding and decoding. Uh, micro DNS, it's MDNS, it's uh, on your local network. When a new device comes, it advertises, uh, hey, I'm here, I can do this and that, so we can pass that there and show your devices or stream to your devices through that. That's, for example, how we can detect um, Chromecast on your network and we can stream whatever you have on your Chromecast. Um, and so these are the libraries we actually maintain ourselves. And then there's like, um, I counted before coming, we have actually 100 different contribs. So that's like 10 
we maintain and 90 others that we don't maintain but are still integrated in VLC. Uh, FMPEG is just one of them. And like all these, still, these things I listed are not handled properly with, uh, by FMPEG. That's why we have to rely, rely on other libraries. There's one famous case, is Life 555, which is basically RTP, RTSP parsing uh, either as a client or as a server. And the RTSP uh, specifications are really bad. They allow anyone to make whatever they want with it. And basically, uh, Life 555 became the de facto standard because whenever people want to do something with RTP, they use that. So if it works with that, that means for them it works. It's not compliant at all with the standard, but it works with that. So now we're stuck with that library, which nobody maintains. But we still find bugs and fix them for them. Um, so the motto for VLC is plays it all. That's why we have 100 libraries that we rely on, because not everything works in FFmpeg. Um, so VLC is module-based. That means you can have your little piece of extra software in it, and it will work with the rest of the software. You can write your own, compile it on the sign, and add it to VLC, and it will work. Uh, so the rest I already mentioned. We use libmatroska for the matroska demuxing, which is the library I wrote, and that's also the library that is used for reading and writing in MKV Toolnix, so MKV Merge, MKV Info, etc. And Louis, Louis scripting I talked about. So now VLC 4.0 is the version that will be released probably not this year, hopefully early next year, which now supports Windows 7, Mac, uh, still OS 2, uh, Android, iPad OS, uh, all the stuff we already support, Raspberry Pi, which is still supported. And we also have uh, now with partnerships and through Video Labs, the kind of things we can do is French ISPs all have their own set-top box where they can play all kinds of videos, and they all ask us to port VLC to their box so they can play any kind of file people come on their USB key or download from some weird places on the internet, in MKV, of course. Uh, so between VLC 3.0 and 4.0, there's currently 10,000 new commits and there's probably a few hundred uh, coming very soon. Uh, so basically, 4.0 is 3.0 plus a completely new UI that I'm going to show you with the media library I talked before that is a bit like iTunes. More hardware acceleration, that means we're going to use the GPU a lot more. Uh, LibVLC integration, that means you can take the engine of VLC without the UI and port it into your own software if you want. For example, the iOS and Android versions, they're not using VLC, they are using LibVLC, and they, then they do their own thing on top of it. Uh, we have more su support uh, for different formats, obviously, through new FFmpeg support, but also our other li libraries. We got lots, tons of bugs fixed, and there's still tons of fixes to come. Uh, we can read, of course, QuickTime files that cannot play on macOS anymore. Uh, we have AirPlay support coming. I don't know why, but when we announced that we had some kind of support, everybody were, went crazy. Or, and uh, the code still hasn't been merged. It was done from a, a student as a Google Summer of Code project, but it works. Uh, we also have JavaScript scripting, which was done this year also as a, from a student for Google Summer of Code. Uh, we don't know yet if we're going to merge that because we have other ideas. Uh, also, 4.0 is 3.0, but we removed some stuff. So the old UI you all know is gone. 
but I will show you uh, what you can do about it. Uh, we don't support Windows XP and Windows Vista uh, anymore. I don't know if that's a problem with you. Actually, the code might still be working, but we're not paying attention anymore if the changes we make will work or not. It could still work, but we're not caring anymore. Since we, you still have 3.0, that works just fine. Uh, we remove support for Mac OS 10.7. Okay, uh, to 10 and on Linux, the only requirement is that your compiler supports C++ 14, and if you don't even want C++ 14, there are some of the modules, because the core is all written in C, you don't even need that. Uh, the user interface has been completely rewritten with the media library. Maybe I'll show you how much time do I have left? We have uh, Okay, okay. I'll do it quickly. So here, basically I'm showing you a snapshot, if it's going to load. Uh, yeah. A snapshot, but you can actually download every night. Uh, we build a snapshot from our Git. Um, so you can download actually already VLC 4.0 and see if if there's an issue, if you like it, if you have comments. So basically, uh, this is the media library with all your files that you can use. Uh, so in your case, it may not be useful because you don't want to VLC know all the files you have on your computer or on your network uh, when you use it. So it's possible to use it without the media library and then you just end up with something that looks like the old VLC. So it's not completely gone. It's been rewritten from scratch, and there's still a way to just use VLC the way you used it before if you don't want the media library. Uh, okay. Now we wait. Uh, so hardware acceleration is something I've personally worked uh, for the past six months, maybe. Uh, it's very important for us, and we allow us to do a lot more, like the Roland Garros uh, demo uh, wouldn't have been possible without hardware decoding. We also support better uh, 10, 12, 16-bit display. That means if your file uh, has one of these bit depths, it will actually show in these bit depths if your screen uh, can do it. For example, if you have an HDR screen. Uh, of course, we support also HDR, but it was in 3.0 already. And now we support hardware decoding using the NVIDIA custom API, which allow us to do more stuff, or like OpenCL if we want to. Uh, LibVLC, I talked about that. Uh, it's usable from pretty much any language you can think of because it's just DLL. If your language can load a DLL, it can load LibVLC and do whatever you want. We have also added new API that you can render uh, your video in your own OpenGL Direct3D uh, video, or if you have different screen, you can. That's how you use it. For example, in Unity, uh, the Games can use that feature to display uh, their videos in whatever texture they have in their games. Basically, we just have a te texture uh, displayed from VLC. Uh, all that. Also, last thing we did very important was what we call common vulnerability and exposures. Uh, basically, uh, recently we've had people come and uh, make what, what's called CVEs, and they issue publicly, oh, there's a bug in VLC, you can crash it, and then you can take ownership on the, of the computer and do whatever if you play that file, which is not true, but because well, people complain a lot and say, oh, VLC is not safe, we take that very seriously. There were two programs sponsored by the European Commission 
to pay actually hackers to find holes in VLC, and then we fixed all of them, and then uh, we actually fixed all of them and were published and it's released. And uh, we all, the important thing about contrib's, the 100 contrib's we have in VLC, that means if a security is, uh, issue is found in these contrib's, we also have to uh, fix them. Even if the country has five years, no developer is working on it anymore, we will fix the country uh, anyway. Uh, so I don't think we have a lot of time for questions. It's technically lunchtime, if, so people can if start you're, going to lunch, or you can ask a question and Otherwise, around. you can ask me during lunch. Yeah. yeah, yeah.